So this, this is actually my winter hat, and since it's uh, officially spring today, this isn't going to get a lot of use for a while. Yeah, it looks silly tilted like that, doesn't it? Um, but I just, I sort of wanted to make it clear, it is a fedora. And gosh, this part of the sides are really starting to get noticeable. I can see it on the camera. All right. So, about probably six years ago now, yeah, about 2012, I don't remember, oh, I do remember what it was. I was watching a Japanese show called Common Rider Double, with a W as the logo. Common Rider is a long-standing Japanese show. In fact, there are some ways to calculate the information that would make Common Rider the longest running fictional television program in history. It's up there with Doctor Who and Ultraman. Not kidding. But it's not very well known in America. Common Rider, by the way, common is, uh, common is the Japanese word for mask. So it's actually Masked Rider. Uh, it was shown briefly in America back in the mid-90s alongside Power Rangers. Power Rangers in Japan is called Super Sentai. Uh, and Power Rangers in America has become a very famous, it's become a household name. Common Rider has not. But Common Rider changes its formula every year. And the formula for Common Rider Double was that there were two. There were two guys who became one Common Rider. Uh, hence the double. But the common writer shows generally have a gimmick and then they have a theme. And the gimmick was that there were two guys that became one. The theme was detective fiction, specifically hard-boiled noir detective fiction, but spoofed with a little Japanese spin on it. So uh, one of the characters affectionately referred to as soft-boiled detective fiction. Um, but, uh, that character that would constantly make the soft-boiled joke to his cohort's misfortune was named Philip. And in fact, he got the name from a character named Philip Marlowe, created by Raymond Chandler back in the 30s and 40s. The show was good. It was a little silly. It was goofy at times, but it had a lot of heart. And it got me to look at the works of Raymond Chandler and Dashiell Hammett and others, and I developed a fondness for detective fiction. I got so f fond of it, in fact, that I decided, <laughs> I don't know why my eyes are going crazy today, but I've had to rub them a whole lot. It might be the pollen in the air. I decided I would start reading, and I was decided that I would start wearing a fedora. And uh, it was about this time as well that the fedora stopped being the stylish, cool uh, accessory of would-be detectives and gangsters. And started being this hipster fashion statement and doff my hat to you, m'lady. Now, when I go on walks, I always wear a hat because they're functional. Uh, a fedora is a white broom hat. It keeps the sun out of my eyes. It keeps my head dry when it's raining. Uh, it keeps my head warm in winter, and I wear a summer version that's made of straw so that it breathes well and doesn't keep my head too hot in the summer. And when I go walking and I see the mostly older folks also walking around and some younger folks jogging around, I just do one of these. That's it. Nothing, no need to make a big deal about it. And it, it does make me a bit of a hipster. The fact that I developed a fondness for this after reading detective fiction that is 70 plus years old, yeah, um, makes me a hipster, I guess. I, uh, I decry hipsters who are doing it for reasons that I don't understand, which usually have to do with music. I don't understand music enough to be a hipster about music. But uh, the reason I brought this up today is that we keep... I've kept talking about this stuff today. Um, I had dinner with my folks and talked about how much I like La La Land and how one day I'd love to write a script for a jazz musical noir detective movie. Because I don't think they make enough jazz musicals. I really like La La Land. And I'd love to see Hollywood make at least one jazz musical a year. And that's not going to happen because they're hard to make, they're expensive, and people like to say they 
want to see musicals and then very often don't go and see them. I urged everybody I knew who didn't take me as a musical fan, I urged everybody to go see La La Land, and like a tenth of the people I told that to actually went and saw the movie. There is a tendency to say that you like things when you only maybe care about them a little bit because it makes you sound more intellectual, and now I'm going to make a small admission. Of Raymond Chandler's works, I've only read two books. I read The Big Sleep and The Long Good Night, or Goodbye. I can never remember if it's Good Night or Goodbye. And I read The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett, which features the famous Sam Spade character. Maltese Falcon was made into a film uh, of great renown. And sadly, Raymond Chandler's works have not been made into a lot of movies. They made The Long Goodbye, I think it was The Long Goodbye, uh, into a movie back in the 70s, and it didn't really fit very well. And The Big Sleep was made into a very weird first-person movie back when it was... God, in the 50s, maybe even the 40s. It was in black and white. Um, but it was uh, Humphrey Bogart as Philip Marlowe. And the problem was no one ever got to see him because it was told. It was shot from the first person. So he was the audience, basically, and he wasn't on screen. You heard his voice. But that wasn't what people wanted from uh, Bogart back then. But I haven't read nearly as much detective fiction as I should if I'm walking around with one of these on. But three detective stories from the 1940s is more than a lot of people have. And so, you know, I'm going to keep doing it. Plus it's functional. And that's all I've really got to talk about today. Um, but whenever the weather starts to turn. I remember the first time I actually picked up The Long Goodbye, and even though I've only read it twice, one of, them, one of the times I read it, I was in the cabin that my family has owned at Lake Okaboji in Iowa. In the middle of, no, excuse me, in the end of May, it was right around Memorial Day, and the weather was perfect. It was not too hot. It was not at all cold. It rained a little bit, enough to give me an excuse to stay inside and read. And it was such a weirdly voyeuristic look into this the lives of these wealthy magnates, uh, a wealthy writer. Um, the, the, the actions of the police to <clears throat> interfere with this private investigation that Marlowe was hired to do. I want to see a story like that on the big screen in the way it deserves to be made. And I know I thought, I'm, I was joking about jazz musicals. I don't know how to write music. I could write a script, but I wouldn't be able to write music for it. But I would love to see that book made into a full-length feature film and done in a period-style setting where everybody is dressed and all the gentlemen are wearing fedoras. Now if I could just remember what the damn name was every time I thought of it. Oh well. Uh, this has been the vlog for March 20th. I'm Eric Spornitz, and tomorrow will be better. <laughs>